Last time on Dragon Ball Rage, it was at last revealed to our heroes that it was the doing of Beerus which brought Cell back to life and bestowed upon him this new power. He's also the reason Pan and Videl are gone. As the rematch reaches its climax, will Gohan be able to overcome the monster, or will all of this be for nothing? <laughs> this story is created by Jairus Smith and is part 4 of an ongoing series. Support him and catch up fully using the links below. As Gohan attacks Cell in a fit of rage, the monster remarks that he's impressed by what he sees. So grabs him, giving him a big hug as he adds insult to injury, citing he's the same helpless boy from before. But this time, his father can't help him. Beast comments that things aren't looking good for a hero. Beerus agrees. He needs to think of something fast. Krillin is shocked by the crazy situation as Piccolo worries for his favorite student. Goku once again shows faith in his son, remarking that he knows how to get the job done, and his training isn't something that's easily forgotten. Cell urges Gohan to give up, mentioning reuniting with his family in death as a cruel motivator to surrender. Cell reminds him of the day he crushed Android 16 and advises he listen to that Cretan again after all these years. Let it go, attempting to completely demoralize him. Gohan responds with a massive headbutt as Cell's plan painfully backfires. Krillin is delighted to see his ally free of the villain's torment. Beerus, seeing the massive impact, is confident that Cell is experiencing some intense pain. Sweet smiles at the turn of events. Goku thinks now's your chance. That's it, Gohan! But our protagonist seems short of breath. Take this! He draws back and launches a barrage of energy attacks towards his enemy. Cell is visibly stunned by his power as the blasts make contact. Auto of debris forms on impact. Gohan reaches through the smoke, shocking Cell as he grabs him by the throat. He struggles for air as Beerus observes the shifting tides of battle. The Saiyan angrily questions Cell about the familiarity of the situation as he utters, This is exactly how you had Videl before you broke her neck. I told you, I'd make you suffer for that! As he buries his fist into his body, Losing himself to his emotions, he summons the memory of everyone suffering due to Cell's wrath. Android 16. Runs. His father. and Yamcha are shocked at their friend's brutality. They haven't seen him like this since he became a Super Saiyan 2. Vegeta's visibly frustrated. He reminisces on how unbelievable it was for him to ascend to that level at such a young age. Beerus is surprised to hear this fighter was such a brute as a child, but Goku reassures he was a brutal warrior as a boy that day. Goku remarks on how his son's power really went to his head back then, and unfortunately, that may be what's happening now. Vegeta says back then, he showed signs of the true savage nature of the Saiyans. As Beerus' eyes glow with excitement, hmm, I see, he utters in delight. Cell grows frustrated as he suffers the pain from Gohan's blow. Who, consumed by rage, asks him if he feels helpless as he revels in his vengeance. Biodroid coughs off blood as he says to the warrior in front of him. So this, that's confidence I remember. And it was the same overconfidence that left you helpless with one arm! Solar Flare! Suddenly, he blinds Gohan using a surprise solar flare. Goku looks upon the battle with concern. Oh no! Gohan got caught by the solar flare! Krillin is understandably worried. Yours, however, is pleased by this effective strategy. Cell's power as a destroyer creates a purple hue as his aura shines on our heroes. He reassures him that if he desperately wants to be reunited with his family, he can help him do just that. Along with the rest of the planet! Our 
hero show concern one by one as the battle seems to be coming to a destructive end. Guys, this is crazy! It's too much! Krillin's right, this is getting out of control! But there's nothing we can do! He's right. Vegeta's stunned by the sight of such destructive power. Goku reassures everyone they don't have to do anything. He has faith in his son just like he did back before. He will overcome this and defeat Cell! Beerus waits to see the result of this confrontation, to see if Gohan truly has what it takes. Cell assures that he will soon be with his family. But Gohan can't allow Cell's destructive power to consume the Earth! The villain revels in the idea of finally having his vengeance, finally ridding himself of this planet which has plagued his mind for so long. He promises this is the end as he orders him to accept his death. Now die! Gohan fires a massive Kamehameha cell. A cell's pure destruction power collides with Gohan's energy. We shows concern, remarking that Gohan may not be able to handle a blast of this magnitude for long. This may be the boy's greatest challenge yet. Beerus agrees. Piccolo is also worried. Goku shows faith in his son and remarks, Come on, son, you can do it. I believe in you. Cell attempts to dishearten Gohan by summoning the failures of his past, citing that he failed Android 16. Trunks, his father, and now his wife and child. He urges Gohan to just give up, who thinks of everyone he has let down. Viciously telling himself that he has been a failure, even to Videl and Pan. He vows never again as power surges through his body. What? No! This is impossible! as he confidently destroys Cell for the sake of everyone on Earth. Our hero's Kamehameha reaches the heavens. Goku's overjoyed to see his son has defeated a god. Beerus remarks that technically speaking, Gohan did in fact accomplish just that, as Vegeta, in typical fashion, points out to Goku that's something he has yet to accomplish. As he falls to his knees, despite everyone's delight, Gohan shrieks in agony and apologizes to Pan and Videl. The next day, the Dragon Balls are gathered as promised by the angel and Lord Beerus. Goku thanks him as they prepare to summon Shenron. He asks Gohan if he's ready, and of course he is, as ready as ever. So Goku calls out for the dragon. Shenron is summoned and introduces himself formally. Goku wishes to resurrect Gohan's beautiful wife and daughter. Shenron assures everyone that the wish has been granted as he disappears into another realm. Gohan rushes home looking for his loved ones to find his dream life is no longer a nightmare. As he's reunited with his family, he apologizes as Videl reassures him everything's fine. They're home now. We begs the question, are you satisfied with the result, my lord? Beerus is more than satisfied. Gohan showed traits of a true warrior. There's no telling how much power he has locked away. Who, still worried about the possible endangerment of his loved ones, asks Goku to sit with Videl and Pan as he approaches the destroyer. Gohan says he knows how Cell was brought back. He admits to him that what he has heard is the truth. However, before he can finish, Gohan interrupts that he wasn't done. Whis is alarmed as the god tells Gohan he just had his family return to him, and he shouldn't ruin it. The half Saiyan announces that he may not agree with Beerus' methods, but from this point on, his family's protection comes first, which means he has a lot of work to do on himself. He knows now that he's no match for him at his current level, but if Beerus were to harm his family again, his new life's sole purpose would be to take him down. The Destroyer comments on his admiration for Gohan. Everyone's surprised. He asks the angel to train him, and Whis quickly agrees. 
After his intense battle with Cell and experiencing the loss of his family, Gohan realized that he must sacrifice his studies and dreams of becoming a scholar, or rather remaining a scholar, to focus more on getting stronger for the sake of his family. This fight has proven that whether he cares for combat or not, fate has placed him in a position where he must set his own feelings aside. As such, he departed with Whis and Beerus to train on their world, leaving behind his wife and child for the greater good. There, he will undergo the same practices which caused his father and Vegeta to ascend to levels unimaginable. After only a few months of training, Whis and Beerus notice how fast Gohan's power has accelerated, thus intriguing Beerus even further. It would seem the rumors regarding the potential of this Saiyan aren't misplaced. He truly is something special. <laughs> Sparring with Whis the angel instructs him not to forget what he's been taught. Which is that he must strike with a calm mind instead of emotion, the very thing which boosts his power. He can have all the muscles in the world, but it's pointless if he allows his emotions to consume him. Then things like anger and confusion will take over, and his opponent can take advantage of that, causing him to inevitably be defeated. Exactly the answer his teacher was looking for, bringing them to the conclusion of today's training. The pair tap down as Beerus chimes that Gohan is catching on rather quickly. However, there still appears to be an aura of hostility between the two. The Saiyan does thank him for the compliment, albeit through gritted teeth. Whis points out this tension. After all, what's to be expected after what transpired on Earth? The god relents that it's understandable. Although, he has already apologized and his family is alive and well. He knows Gohan is smart enough to not let a little tension change this. Frustrated at the audacity, but not wanting to escalate things, Gohan merely utters, of course not. Which is what Beerus thought. Alas, the Saiyan decides, if it's alright with Whis, he plans to go meditate for a while. The angel doesn't protest. And back home. Piccolo does his usual Piccolo things. He can't help but lament that if only he had gotten there a little sooner, he could have done something. The horrors of events prior is on him. The emotion that overwhelmed him at the loss of Pan and his family being put through such terrible things. If he had been there, then maybe, just maybe, he could have prevented Videl and Pan from dying. The Namekian's tired, tired of feeling useless. Whenever he had to get stronger, he was only able to do so through fusion. First, it was with Nail in an attempt to defeat Frieza, then it was Kami. We glance back to those events. But no more! He may not be a Saiyan and will never be able to catch up to Goku or Vegeta, but he will find a way to increase his strength without having to rely on anyone. There will come another time where he's needed, and when that time comes, he'll be ready. First, he thinks it's time for another session in the hyperbolic time chamber. As he blasts away to better himself, we rejoin Gohan, already in the middle of his meditation. Beerus comments how he's grown quite strong in his little time here. Whis agrees. In fact, he progresses at a rate even faster than Goku or Vegeta. A very impressive feat. That's when the Destroyer gets an idea. He commands him to bring Goku here. He wants him to compare the two and see where Gohan really stands. The angel agrees to do so with a smile on his face. With Goku. The grandpa happily enjoys his time with Pan and Videl. Though something abruptly catches his attention. As Whis enters the room with no inhibitions, he offers his greetings to all present. Videl turns to him and says hi in return. Our hero is curious how Gohan's training is coming along which is exactly the reason why he's here. By the wishes of Lord Beerus, he would like Goku to return with him to examine his current strength, one compared to his. Enough to catch the attention of the Saiyan, although that does really sound fun. Does he really think his new strength can match Super Saiyan Blue? It hasn't been too long since he left. It's an awfully big stretch to think he already caught up. And be that as it may, Whis believes he will be surprised. Also, he doesn't think they should keep Lord Beerus waiting too long. They all know how impatient he can be. Which is true. Figuring whatever, they can go. But before they take off, Vidal reminds Goku to come back and let her know how her husband's doing, 
and how much progress he's made. Who wouldn't dream of leaving her high and dry? The pair make their way to their destination in no time. The angel alerts that he's returned with the Saiyan as requested. Goku offers him the casual salutations. But the destroyer doesn't want to hear it. What took him so long to get here? Causing Goku to instead offer his befuddled apologies. Beerus explains that the reason he's called him here is to. Cutting him off, Goku finishes his sentence. To compare Gohan's new strength to his own. Whis already told him. And that's correct. Sorry to disturb his meditation. The angel brings it to Gohan's attention that his participation is required for a moment. Sensing his father's arrival, and able to make the obvious assumption, he beckons that Beerus would like to compare his strength to that of his dad's, to see where he currently stands. As this is confirmed, Gohan is happy to oblige. With the sun approaching, Goku can already tell how much different this Gohan is versus the one who left a while ago. This should be good! First, he's just happy to see his dad. Being alone here without his family has been something else. Goku's happy to see him too. Asking if he's been made aware of why he himself is here. And if so, does he think he's ready? With confidence, Gohan announces that he is. Goku powers up shouting that they begin. Now controlling his previous enraged mystic, or enraged ultimate form, Gohan makes it known to all, though possibly mostly to himself, that he has at long last ascended. This is Evolved Mystic. His father is immensely proud of him. He's improved so much in so little time. He's gonna hold his own a lot better than the last time they sparred. Gohan smirks not only that, but he's gonna beat him. Goku presses if that is the case, then he better give it everything he's got. I plan to! Meanwhile, aboard a particular spaceship. Sorbet makes his return, apparently resurrected from Earth. He questions his leader if he'd like to plot a course for said planet. Frieza scowls at the thought of those Saiyans. He may have fought alongside of them to secure the safety of this universe, but only because it belongs to him. It is still his to rule. As a shadowy figure pans into the scene with a familiar timbre, he chortles that it seems Frieza has had a little trouble since he's been away. Though the Emperor is not asking for his help, nor for his opinion on the matter. The figure replies that he may not request it, but they both know he needs it. Revealing Cooler, who comments that based on all the information he's been given, Frieza has failed to kill these Saiyans on multiple occasions, so it might be time for a different approach. With the reemergence or even reimagining of Cooler, what exactly could he have in mind? Even if he's able to match his brother in terms of strength, would they even have a chance against Goku? Let alone the combination of Goku, Vegeta, and now Gohan. <laughs>